was a largely forgettable experience, also known as Hyper 3D Pinball in both the states and Japan. It was also released purely on the Saturn, you know, like that matters. Here are some games I reviewed recently that are better than this. Proteus, Panzer Dragoon, Steep Slope Sliders, or hell, even Rampage. So why in God's name would you even bother trying? Or even more specific to the pinball genre, I reviewed two titles so far out of the four or five, not including this one, and specific to the Saturn, and this is definitely the weakest. With Necronomicon, I really like just about everything. With True Pinball, it had that one table that I really liked, one that I shared an instant liking to and formed an emotional bond that would make me consider going back and playing that game. The only thing this game does better than True Pinball is being able to change between 2D and 3D views on the fly. And while that was probably a technical achievement back in the day, I could not possibly give a flying monkey fuck about that option. One thing I felt playing the game is I much prefer the 2D over the 3D in this game, and it's the first pinball game so far where I've felt that way. This game also has six tables to choose from. Road King USA, Fun Fair, The Monster, The Gangster, Star Quest 2049, and Mystic and Magic. While I will say on the whole the tables are generally better than True Pinball, that's not a high bar set. I spent most of my time playing True Pinball being pretty bored, so just about anything will be better than that. What I will say is that True Pinball had the Vikings table, and I don't believe any table here really gave me the raging heart on that table did. I mean, is it even fair to compare pinball titles with each other from the same era? I think it is, because it's not comparing apples and oranges. The menu presentation is mostly dull. The blue backgrounds were so bland and yet were so sharp and hard on the eyes, I couldn't even make out that was a pinball table behind that wall of colour until I went back and had a look at the captured gameplay. Not to mention the menus in-game annoyed me for some reason. They look thin and had gross ugly colours. The in-game presentation is much better though. I generally liked how it was laid out and it looked pretty good. Graphics are broken down into the 2D and 3D view. The 2D view is very reminiscent of pinball games I played in the DOS era. The detail is pretty good and very rarely skips a beat. The 3D view has a static camera angle in the way Necronomicon did, so anything bad I say about that can be applied to a pinball game I hold in high esteem. Graphically it all checks out I guess. The sounds are authentic from the bumpers to the flippers. And the music's all right, I, I guess. Gameplay's not bad. Ball physics here are all right, but the one thing I found is that the ball behaved a little differently between the 2D and the 3D modes. Nothing I can quite put my finger on firmly, but whatever it was, it didn't gel 100%. It's nothing major, but it did feel different. What lets it down is that I was kinda hoping there would be a pinball game that does something new and interesting with the camera angles. But, the angle this time around is far closer to the table than Necronomicon, so it's a lot harder to see your ball most of the time. And the only time you'll be able to follow the ball is when it's about two thirds of the way down the table, and your reaction has to be a lot quicker. In the 2D, it's a lot harder to follow the ball because the camera angle does it for you. And even though we can tell you're heading for the flippers, you can't really make a time judgement because the camera simply follows the ball. So you never really see the ball until it's there. Not to mention that my interest in all of these tables was at best indifferent. I didn't hate the tables, but nothing really grabbed me by the stones and took attention. It was all a very ho-hum affair. Each table had a theme, but the game itself had no apparent theme across all the tables. I mean, okay, it shouldn't matter too much, I guess. But the complete lack of interest made this a very dreary experience. <coughs> Lasting appeal will be here for a while in terms of hours because of the sheer volume of tables. The quality is not really high enough to be outstanding to sit around and play it any longer than that. Would I recommend this game? No. It's not the worst satin title I've ever played, and you could do far worse than this, but it's mostly rather dull. You could do better than this even within the genre of pinball. <laughs>